Hey there, it's Liz Joria here, your tax advisor and accountant. On uh, today's video, we're going to talk about an update of what's going on out there, number one, with unemployment and also with the IDL and the PPP. So real quick, I'm going to jump in um, straight to the point. Uh, first of all, it's good and bad news. It's all mixed up. Um, a lot of people are like really excited because they heard, okay, you know, Trump has signed, you know, the executive order and now we're going to have $400 a week. Yeah, it's being cut down from 600 to 400. Phenomenal. But just wait a moment there. I wish it would be that good of a news. The truth is that right now that $400 is not really a solid $400 and that's why I'm taking this time to kind of do an update here on my channel because I really want to be very clear about this. I know there's a lot of folks out there like you that may be unemployed. You're really depending on this income. I know I have friends. I have people that I know directly that are going through really, really hard financial you know, situation. And my heart goes to all of you because I know how difficult things are. Even for businesses right now, right? So we have had over what, 120, 130,000. Um, and I don't even think those are real numbers, by the way. I think they're way higher than that, that they are out of business right now, okay? Now, so what's going on for you folks too, who are unemployed? Uh, as we said, from 600, it dropped to 400, but that's not really true. Really, the executive order was a 300, so they did finally cut that 50% off. That was so afraid that was going to happen, and it did. So, you know, he's saying it's 400. He's telling states, hey, come in and do a contribution, and each state is going to add another $100 per, you know, person. That's almost impossible as it is. States cannot even maintain the people who are already at an unemployment tax. So the reality is that even though it looks great to see the number 400, it's not a realistic number because from my opinion, from all the articles and things that I have went really in depth uh, to get this information and research it before I did this video for all of you, is the reality is that what's happening is, number one, like I said, states don't have that additional money. And really, if I see a state stepping up and saying, yes, we have those extra funds to add that $100 to every week, I would be shocked. And, um, and, and, you know, I hope that there is some state out there some way that are capable of doing that. But as far as I know, states have been hurting for a long, long time. And this has been really, really chaotic for states to be paying all these maximum unemployment. So I want you to understand, hopefully, that you can really count with those $300 but there's something else, a caviar that I have to add on, and I, I hate to do it, but I, I, I have to be upfront with you. Here's another thing. I know some folks out there are getting less for whatever reason, whether you have just been working prior to 18 months that you work in, you know, in the specific state, it's how you're getting paid for unemployment. So the reality is if for whatever reason, maybe you only work in part-time, or you were um, maybe you know uh, an S corporation, you were paying yourself a payroll, or whatever was the situation, here's the thing, is that they pay you based on how much accumulated credits you have, remember? So a lot of people are getting less than $100 a week, so they're not even getting the full amount um, that usually most states will offer. So what's happening is that if it's under $100, and I think this should not have been included in the executive order, I completely disagree with the president in this. And yes, I have a right to express my opinion, uh, free speech, right, <laughs> for this country. But here's the thing is, if you're under $100, you're currently getting under $100, chances are that you're not going to even be able to actually collect the pandemic emergency. So instead of 600, that other 300, like I said, that's really the reality that you may be going to get, well, you might not even get that. And I, I hate to be the one with the, giving you the bad news, but I'm seeing this throughout a lot of things that I have researched. I hope that some way, somehow, they realize that they need to really revise this because this is wrong. You guys need that money. And who, if somebody has less than $100 per week in state unemployment, 
how the hell you know, don't need more money? Of course you do. So I really hope that you can change it because again, if you're under hundred dollars right now, it's stating that you will not get not even the extended emergency pandemic uh, unemployment. And that's terrible. I completely, like I said, disagree because all of you need all the help that you can. You're not unemployed because you want to, it's because you got laid off and whether the company shut down, like I said, whatever could have been the situation, uh, or you can even find a job because then, you know, I'm seeing some people mix messages up there. And, and like I said, I really kind of emphasize and I have sympathy for people out there who are really unemployed because I know what it is. I was there once, you know, and I know, I know what it is to be in your shoes. And the fact is, I can understand why would they put a caviar in a section where people mostly need, otherwise they have the minimum. So, you know, let's hope for the best that somehow there's gonna be revision of this and that what everybody at least to take a breath and have those three hundred dollars per week without that restriction that you have to have more than a hundred dollars per week already collecting right now before you're entitled to the uh the emergency pandemic three hundred dollars okay another thing real quick with idl okay there's still funds available there's quite a few billion dollars that's been accumulated in their account and um in the last i would say three four weeks there's been a lot of approvals with all these loans which i'm glad to see that but again i, I haven't really seen companies that are getting what they're supposed to be getting um so Again, I think that we need a lot of transparency, especially with SBA and IDL. There's been a lot of, you know, I think, um, you know, favor, you know, in certain companies and, 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 and so on. And, you know, I, I hope this really changes because there's plenty of funds there to still continue helping all of you who's out there. I know some of you are still waiting. Maybe you got the grant, but you still haven't got the loan. Um, others maybe got a, you know, a, a proposal for a loan, but it's ridiculously low. It was a low ball that they throw you. And now remember, you are entitled to go back and say, I want an increase. Now, I'm going to share another thing that I think a lot of people don't talk about is the IDL, when you ask for that request, you have to request it. And yes, you have to put it in writing. You have to go through a process of paperwork, but it's worth it. Here's the thing I want to share with you also. Did you know that they're only going to consider, even with the request, they're only going to consider that you will only get six months worth of the income. That's right. So whatever you made, so like I'll give you an example, really simple. Let's say that you made a total of fifty thousand dollars. All right, gross. Especially if you're in a professional services, not a product company. What they're gonna do is they don't take it in account expenses. What they're gonna do is look at your gross amount and says, "Oh, here you made fifty thousand dollars. Guess what? We're gonna go ahead and only give you half of that, twenty-five. That's right. So they're only giving on the loans amount." six months worth of the income that you made previously in that year. And if you didn't file 2019, then you're gonna head back to the 2018, okay? So a lot of people are not aware of this. They think because, oh, they're requesting an increase, I'm gonna get, you know, double, triple, not happening either. That's their, uh, you know, restriction. And then I'm very open about this, but that's exactly what's going on, okay? Luckily, yes, I got my grant. Yes, I got my loan not expecting again to what I thought I was going to get. And by the way, for all of you who's out there, it took me four months. That's right. You heard me right. Four months for me to finally get the increase that I had been requesting. And, and that was like a month earlier that I had put a request. So I was one of the early birds way at the end of March. Um, and a lot of people I know out there who partly started at the time that I did. And guess what? they had all these issues right and uh we thought we were the early birds and we ended up having to wait longer and longer um anyhow they seem that there's going to be plenty of increases i hope so um if you haven't got your loan and you have your paperwork i tell you go for it don't wait any longer because now it's finally i'm starting to see that they're calling people back they're emailing the, uh, this the communication has definitely improved when i was 
in my process, which was a nightmare, uh, maybe because I had, did not have a good experience. That is the truth. And uh, I know some people did and good for you. I'm glad if you're in the, in, in the good side of it, but I know I did it. And I also have been able to communicate to other people and other small business owners that they went pretty much, um, well, through hell uh, to get their loans. And again, here's the funny part. It's a loan. It's not even free money like the PPP, okay? Now, PPP, also the same thing. Uh, you know, there's been a cut date on that, but they're still processing some of the PPPs. Uh, they, they, they really have very little funds in there. And I think that whatever the SBA is not going to use, they should actually allocate that funds, okay, and really start proving smaller businesses, okay, and with less requirements, but to help us continue prospering and especially being afloat. Because the problem is that we need to help those people that we can contract and they're unemployed. That way we can pull off that kind of, uh, you know, weight from the economy. And as a small business and entrepreneur, we can hire a lot of people who are unemployed right now. They're very qualified, they're experienced, they have the will to work. And you know what? We need to come afloat as, as, as an entrepreneur to be able to improve our companies. We agree. So anyhow, I just wanted to give you a quick update. I know it's been a little while. Again, um, stay uh, you know, connected with me. I'm going to try to do more often videos. And, and by the way, I do have a podcast too if you want to listen to the audio instead. Uh, there's always a link below. You can subscribe to my podcast. And I also wanted to kind of end up something that people have been asking me for a while and I didn't want to, uh, at first it was just kind of time consuming. I'm very happy to really announce that I have started creating really uh, online courses uh, for business coaching. Um, and I have also a membership group that's going to be starting very, very soon. And if all of you who have been my subscribers, my followers, or you just happen to be that you have found me, then please jump in. If you're the early bird, you're going to get the best discount. I'm offering right now a free training for very limited time. It's going to be just a few spots. And you know what? Take advantage of it because even if you're right now unemployed and you're really thinking about, I want to start my own business, I really know I got what it takes, then jump in. I'm making it complimentary. I was going to charge a couple hundred dollars. I have waived the fee completely because I know the circumstances and the economical situation that we live in right now. And I want some way, somehow to be a help to other people like you who are unemployed or whether you do have a business, but right now it's a flat line. You're not making no revenue. Maybe it's time for you to start building something new on the side, right? So again, you can click below. It's, uh, you can enroll. It's going to be phenomenal. Hopefully I'm going to have another video with a little more detail about it. I think you're going to love it. And like I said, I really like to see you on the other side. It's completely, like I said, complimentary. So don't, no worries, no, no payments, no, no catch 22. I'm not going to ask you for a credit card, nothing like that. Again, I'm doing this because I know of the challenging times that we're living. So I hope my information has been somehow, you know, valuable for you. And I love if you, there's anything that you'd like me to share more on my channel that you feel that other people are not really covering, then by all means do Again, as you know, I'm an accountant, I am a tax advisor, and mostly I'm an entrepreneur like you. And I know what it is to go through hard times. And I want to somehow, like I say, help people out there as much as possible. So yeah, I hope I see you in the inside. And like I said, you know, feel free to, you know, comment and give me some of your feedback because that helps me grow my business. Like, share, if you really enjoyed this video. And, uh, and like I said, I hope to see you in the inside. That's going to be a description, like I said, below that you can just go ahead and roll for the free course. Okay. And uh, anyhow, I'll see you on the other side. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.